implementing Odoo can be exhausting. Getting things just right for your company can take a bunch of time. How about you take a break from that for a second? I've got 10 simple features in Odoo that can save you time and energy, and they're easy wins. I can almost guarantee you that there will be at least one of these you're not using yet. So let's get into it. Also guys, this may be obvious, but I'm going to burn through these 10 different items. I'm not gonna go into great detail with them, but if I have another video that I think would be useful to you, I'm going to put it in the top corner here, okay? I'm not going to necessarily call it out or anything like that, but I wanna make sure that you have access to the most useful information that I can give you. So that'll be there. Our first one here has to do with helping our customers out. So if we go into Help Desk, we can see really quickly that there's an email address right here. This email address is what's known as an alias inside of Odoo. And sending an email to this email address will automatically create a help desk ticket for the team it's assigned to. If we don't like the alias, we can always come into here, go to settings, and change the alias right here. And if we have a custom email server for receiving emails, we can set that right here as well. But let me show you how this works. Any email sent to this email address is going to create a ticket for us, like I said. So I can say, please help me. And I can say, I really need some help with the product that you sent me. And then we can add attachments. Those will also be included in the ticket. So I'm gonna throw something in here real quick. Uh, not my tax return, how about a delivery slip, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and say send and we'll see what happens here. A few minutes later, we can see that a new ticket was created. It says, please help me, which was <laughs> the subject of my email. And you can see the attachments are down here and the body of the email comes into the description so that we can address this more effectively. Just a side note, I won't generally give this email address to the customers directly. I'll have my team go ahead and forward emails to this email address. So if there is an issue and they received an email about it, we'll go ahead and forward it to the correct team. That way a ticket is created for us. Number two is a lot like this one. If we hop into accounting, this one doesn't show up quite as easily as the other one, but if we click the three dots, we can go to configuration and advanced settings. And you can see I also have an alias here. So this one's going to be purchases at whatever my really long domain is. So we're gonna send an email to that email address. Again, this isn't something that I would give to my vendors, normally speaking. It's something where I would have my AP team essentially forward any emails with bills to this email address, but we're gonna do this for testing. So we'll go ahead and send. And again, a few minutes later, I have this draft bill that came in, okay? And if I've got it set up to where the AI is looking through my bills, it's gonna try its best to put this together. Generally, I don't rely on the AI too much. It doesn't do the greatest job, but you see I've got the PDF right here and I can go ahead and walk through this real quick. Obviously that can save me a lot of time because I don't need to go through downloading and uploading PDFs. I don't have to do any of that. And potentially when the AI picks up a little bit, this will look a lot better starting out. Next up, we have number three, which is all about how we can make our sales process a little bit easier. So with sales, we send our customer quotations, right? And with this, they often may talk with us and say, hey, what about this, what about that? And then finally confirm it. But what if we could make it so that our customers could automatically confirm their own sales orders? So we're gonna set up a sales order here for Andrew Test, okay? And then we put together our nice little quotation for them. But in other info, we can say, okay, if the customer signs this in the portal, or if the customer pays a certain percentage, that's going to automatically confirm our sales order, okay? So if I come into this and we'll do online signature and we're gonna throw some order lines on this real quick. I don't have any products just yet, but cheeseburger, sure. We'll do that and go ahead and save. And these are going to be really, really good cheeseburgers. And I'm going to click send and go through all this stuff. So when the customer clicks into that email, they'll be taken to the portal and they'll be able to see this guy here. I set this up to be a signature confirmation. So if I go to accept and sign, it throws in my little signature there. And then once this is done, if we come back into the sales order, let me go back, we will see that this guy is now confirmed, which is pretty slick. 
Now I find the payment is much more useful than the signature. I'd much rather have people's money than their signature most days, but I'll leave that up to you. You can use either one of those. Okay, so for number four, this might seem like a simple and perhaps silly one, but I've seen a lot of customers that it saves them a fair amount of time, especially if you have an e-commerce store. So inside Odoo, for our e-commerce sales to show up in our profit and loss, we need to create an invoice from them. But most of the time, people pay for their sales order or their cart right away on e-commerce. We don't need to be going in and confirming those sales orders and applying the payment, creating an invoice. We don't need to be doing any of that. So if you want to avoid that, we want to go into settings. We're going to go to auto and we're going to scroll down just a bit. Okay. And you're going to see this automatic invoice button right here. Okay. We'll go ahead and save that. And now we don't need to worry about manually invoicing any sales orders that came from our e-commerce store. All right. Now number five, and I'm sure you're going to use this one. You'll need to be in debug mode for this so you can see the little bug. Okay. But in any record, there's probably things that I want set every single time, right? Uh, maybe in this, I want to say we're always going to want our customers. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. We're always going to want our customers to give us a 50% down payment to confirm their sales order. Well, if that's the case, we can click this bug right here and then we can go to set default values. Okay, so we can say it's only for me or it's for all users, but I can click on this default and then I can come down through and say my prepayment percentage is 50%. Okay, save that default. And I would also need to come into this and say that for all users, my online payment is true and save that default. And yeah, you can use those default values in any place inside of Odoo. It's pretty sweet. Real quick, guys, if you'd like more tips, tricks, or tidbits, go ahead and sign up for my weekly newsletter. The link is in the description below. Okay, for number six, we're going to talk a little bit about focus and making sure to get the information we need when we need it. And of course, I'm talking about filters, okay? So when I come into sales, I may not just want to look at my quotations. I may want to come in and see, okay, let's group by salesperson, and let's say that the create date... Um, we're going to say is in 2025. So with that, I'm going to come into this and I'm going to save this search as a favorite. I'm going to say this is 2025 sales by salesperson, just because I want to be able to see this down the road. And if I want this to be the default, whenever I come into this view, I can set that here. And yeah, either way, I can save this. So next time I come in here, I can set this 2025 sales by salesperson and it's gonna give me that exact same view so I can get what I wanna see very quickly. So for number seven, it's gonna be a lot like this, but say we have a lot of information, like what we just did in our favorite filters, that we want to be able to get to very quickly. Well, obviously there's a trick for that. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna to go to apps, and this is a little module that doesn't get installed automatically for some reason anymore. It used to be in older versions of Odoo. So you want to come down to this one that says dashboards and says board in red and click install. And this is going to add a nice little feature for us. So we're going to go into sales. My quotation, sure, I'll go ahead and keep that. I'm going to click the gear up here and I'm going to go to dashboard and say add to my dashboard. And I'm going to say my quotations and add that. Okay. And then I'm going to go to to invoice and I'm going to save this one as well. My orders to invoice just because I want to be aware of what's going on there. And it's telling me to refresh. So we're going to refresh. And now when I go back out and go to dashboards, there's this cool little menu right here called my dashboard. I'm going to click that and you can see it saved these views for me. And these are going to refresh automatically so I can keep tabs on all this information. I can change the layout so I can say, oh, let's see this half and half. Um, and, and this isn't just limited to list views. I can go ahead and throw graphs in here, all this other stuff, but it gives me a very tailored high level view of what's going on in Odoo so I can keep tabs on it. Okay, so number eight is still along the lines of filtering, finding the stuff that we want, highlighting that focus. Say in here, I wanna be able to add a filter that everybody can use or I want to be able to add a group by, or maybe I want to tailor these autocomplete fields. Changing this is actually super simple. All I need to do is go into Studio, and once that's loaded up, I go into Views, 
I go to search and you can see all this information is right here. Okay. So if I want to add a group by, well, I can throw that right up here into my group by. Okay. Or if I want to add a filter, I can create the filter in here and it's going to give me that nice little domain view that I can use so that people can use this filter whenever they want. Or if I want to be able to search by something else on my sales order, say I want to be able to come into here and search by, well, I've already got campaign there. Let's see if I want to be able to look by my currency for some reason, I can throw that right here. And then when I come back out, it changes this search view for me so that I have that. And if I try and search something in here, I've got the currency now. It's pretty cool. It makes it so it's easy for me and my team to navigate around inside of our data. Our last two are a tiny bit more involved, but they're important to know about because it can save you a ton of time down the road. For number nine, there's so much in Odoo that revolves around inventory flow. In fact, keeping everything connected can be super essential for a lot of companies. Sure, reordering rules are nice, they're awesome, replenishment is great, but maybe we don't order stuff until our customers need it and we want to link a purchase order to our sales order or link a manufacturing order to our sales order. If that's the case, you really need to know about a route called MTO or make to order. So to take advantage of this, there's a few things that we need to do. We wanna to go to settings and then we wanna type routes because we're going to need multi-step routes for this. And once we've got that, we're gonna go back out. We're gonna to go to routes inside of our inventory. Make to order is by default archived for some reason, I'm not sure why, but we wanna to go to archived, click on this guy, go to actions, unarchive, okay? And then what we wanna do is create a little example product for ourselves, okay? We're gonna do this on the purchasing level, but the same thing works for manufacturing. So we'll go to products, and I'm going to go in and we're going to do this with cabinet with doors. Okay. Um, on purchase, we've got a vendor that we can purchase this from. You need this if you want MTO to work properly. And then you also want to go into inventory, make sure we have replenish on order. And I'm also going to make it so that we can select buy on the product so that we make sure this is working properly. So let me refresh that. We want to have make to order and buy. So to slow down for a second here, what MTO does is it automatically triggers that buy route after we've confirmed a sales order. So it's going to say, okay, whatever we sold on this sales order, we now need to purchase for cabinet with doors and we're gonna link those two up. So let's see how that looks here. So we'll come into our sales order. We're gonna do a new quotation uh, for Andrew Test and it's going to be for a cabinet with doors. Okay, uh, we're gonna do 10 of these. Okay, so you can see our little forecast graph, this guy right here, is green. That's not necessarily because we have stock. If we look at cabinet with doors, currently, well, we have 33 on hand, so that's great. But still, the MTO is gonna keep this green even if we don't have stock on hand because it's saying, hey, we're gonna get this, so we're good. So if I click confirm now, we will see that there is a purchase order tied to this sales order. And if I click into it, that purchase order is for 10 cabinets with doors because we used our make to order route in combination with the buy route. This can be super useful if your team is trying to run lean and wants to keep everything connected so that you know what sales orders kicked off which purchase orders and potentially which sales orders kicked off which manufacturing orders. All right, if you stuck around this long, it's now time to talk about number 10 our last low hanging fruit that can save you and your team time and energy. And this one is all about communication and keeping our communication consistent to our customers, our vendors, everybody outside of our company. So a lot of companies don't use this to full effect, but if you click send here, you'll see we have an email that pops up with specific information in it that's already populated, okay? This guy right here, is all driven from what is called an email template, which is basically just a form email where it takes information from the record that you're triggering it from and puts it into an email. You can still customize this before you send it out, but this makes it so that it is very easy for our team to communicate different things to a customer. If you wanna create your own email template, that's easy enough to do. All you have to do is go to the main screen, start typing, 
and go to email templates. A lot of these email templates are already triggered by something else inside of the system. But say we want a new one for sales. I'm going to come in and just say thank you for a sale, something like that. We say it applies to sales orders. And the subject is just going to be thank you. Okay. Within this, then, I can use Odoo's little email builder. I can put in dynamic fields, which are going to be fields based on the sales order model. Okay. I can build this all out here so that it's easy for me to go in and send this out to my customer. And to make it even easier to send to my customer, I can add a contextual action. So if I click add context action and then duplicate this tab, you'll see when I come over to sales and I click into one of these and click right here. Now I have this send mail. Thank you for a sale. So there you have it. 10 little changes you can make inside of Odoo that will save you and your team time and less money. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll have more for you next week.